Coming up on this Monday edition of Newsline at Noon, a senior North Korean official says the recent purging of leader Kim Jong-un's liberal uncle won't affect Pyongyang's economic policies, including its campaign to attract foreign investment to special economic zones. As Korea's railway union strike enters its second week, an elderly woman is killed getting off a subway train that was partially operated by a substitute worker. Police seek arrest warrants for 10 union leaders. Plus, the world bids a final farewell to Nelson Mandela as he's buried in his ancestral home of Kunu. These stories and more on Newsline at Noon. Where's the best place for beef and bop? The Jeux Olympiques divers se dérouleront-ils à Pyeongchang? Hal antum hakkan sabi akbar musadr fil alam? Kono kashi wa dare desu ka? Korea is attracting interest from around the world. The more you know, the more you want to know. Dynamic Korea. Thanks for joining us. You're watching Newsline at Noon. I'm Che Yusan in Seoul. Very good to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. Now, President Park Geun-hye says that given the current political situation in North Korea, the South Korean government can't rule out the possibility of a reckless provocation by Pyongyang. The recent execution of Chang song tae who was regarded as the second most powerful figure in North Korea, has raised many questions about Pyongyang's next move. During a meeting with her top secretaries on Monday, the president urged the public and private sectors and the military to stay prepared for any contingencies, taking into account the, quote, seriousness and unpredictability of the current situation. She also ordered her security chief to keep a close eye on any movement from Pyongyang, especially on the five South Korean islands in the West Sea closest to North Korea. And in about two hours' time, President Park will preside over a meeting of foreign affairs and security ministers to discuss the situation in the North. South Korea is keeping a close eye on the North based on an understanding that Chang's execution suggests the Kim Jong-un regime is not as stable as thought and that Pyongyang could possibly launch a provocation to turn people's attention away from its internal issues. Those attending this afternoon's meeting will be President Park's top security advisor, Kim Jiang-soo, the country's defense, foreign affairs and unification ministers, as well as the spy agency chief. A senior North Korean official says the execution of leader Kim Jong-un's uncle will not negatively affect the country's economic policies and North Korea will push ahead with attracting foreign investment by developing new economic zones. Our Kim Young-gil reports. Yoon Young-suk, a senior member of the State Economic Development Committee, told the Associated Press on Sunday that Pyongyang's trade goals remain the same despite Chang song taeks execution. Even the Chang song taeks group caused great harm to our economy. There will be no change at all in the economic policy of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. It's just the same as before. Last month, North Korea announced plans to create special economic zones in each province to provide incentives for foreign tourism and investment. Yoon Se Chang's removal would instead speed up progress on the economic front because he was a threat to national unity. He said Chang's execution should not scare away Chinese investment, which is crucial to the success of the zones. Our State Economic Development Committee welcomes investment and business from any country to take part in the work of developing our new economic zones. However, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said Sunday that Chang's execution is an ominous sign of the instability and danger that exists in North Korea. He said Kim Jong-un's decision to execute his uncle underscores the importance of a well-coordinated international effort to reduce nuclear threats from the country. 
Meanwhile, Kim Kyung-hee, Chang Song-tak's wife and the aunt of Kim Jong-un, appears to have survived the purge and execution of her husband as her name was included on a leadership list in the North state-run media over the weekend. Kim young Arirang News. North Korea is expected to hold a ceremony today to commemorate the second anniversary of the death of former leader Kim Jong-il. If held, all eyes will be on who will be seated next to current leader Kim Jong-un, which will be indicative of the regime's new power structure. Last year, the leader's uncle, Chang Song-tek, who was executed last Thursday, was seated third to the left of Kim Jong-un, showing his high rank in the regime. The South Korean government is closely watching whether Kim's aunt and Chang's widow, Kim kyung hee will appear at the meeting, a sign she is resuming her public activities in the political arena. Kim Jong-un is expected to pay his respects at the Kim Susan Palace of the Sun, the mausoleum where his father and grandfather lie in state on Tuesday with his wife, Lee seol Ju. As we mentioned, the memorial service for Kim Jong-il and planned visits to North Korea by foreign dignitaries this week will, uh, should give us a glimpse at the regime's new power hierarchy. Our Hwang Sang-hee tells us more. With the death of late North Korean ruler Kim Jong-il on December 17, 2011, his 27-year-old successor Kim Jong-un found his hands full. A nuclear arsenal, over one million troops, more than $6 trillion worth of natural resources, together with a heavily oppressed and impoverished population of 24 million, were all under the young Kim's reign. Making friends with an American NBA star and courting his fashionable wife in public, the young leader certainly distinguished himself from his father. His father was more distant. He seems to be more like a natural politician who actually uh, gets on well with people and mixes with them. He's photogenic like his grandfather was. And so that's what he's been deploying in his leadership style. But the shattering side of Kim Jong-un was revealed just days before his two-year anniversary in power, with the young leader removing his own family member from North Korea's ruling elite. Experts say the execution of his uncle Chang Song Tek, who was known as the second most powerful man in North Korea, signals that the young leader has entered a new phase in his leadership. A second in command cannot exist in North Korea. Only one leader exists. In that sense, Kim Jong un seems to have removed Chang Song Tek, the second man in power, to tighten his grip on power. As shocking as the news of Chang's removal was to the outside world, Experts say it was a calculated move and a much-expected one. One by one, Kim had been dismissing senior officials from his father's generation and replacing them with his own inner circle. But Chang's execution may also destabilize the North Korean regime. It shows how corrupted the North Korean leadership is and that there are many internal conflicts due to the forces who oppose change. In the long term, this may provoke the North Korean citizens. In the foreseeable future, however, the young leader will continue portraying himself as a relaxed and open ruler, welcoming retired American basketball player Dennis Rodman for the third time this year and allowing an international delegation to tour the Kaesong Industrial Complex this week. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. In other news, the South Korean Air Force carried out a surveillance flight that included the submerged rock Iodo off the southern coast on Sunday as the country's newly expanded air defense zone came into effect. Officials said that an early warning plane was mobilized on a patrol and surveillance mission over some parts of the extended Korea Air Defense Identification Zone. An official said foreign aircraft passing through the zone will be required to identify themselves 15 to 30 minutes in advance, maintain communications and file flight plans. Seoul did not inform Chinese authorities of its patrol in advance. A week ago, Seoul announced the new zone to counter Beijing's unilateral decision last month to expand its own to cover the Korea-controlled Iodo and the southern islands of Marado and Hongdo. Amid the ongoing controversy over the state spy agency's alleged interference in domestic politics, a special parliamentary committee 
to reform the National Intelligence Service began discussions this week on how the relevant laws should be amended. But the ruling and opposition parties are still very far apart on what the scope of the reforms should be. Kim yeon -ji reports. On Monday, the National Assembly's Special Committee to Reform the Nation's Intelligence Agency invited a group of experts to share their views on how to make the agency more politically neutral. The National Intelligence Service stands accused of meddling in last year's presidential election by launching a smear campaign online to sway public opinion in favor of then-ruling party candidate and current president Park Geun-hye. The ruling Sinuri party wants to limit the scope of the reforms, saying the agency did a good job of collecting information on the purge of Chang Sung Tech in North Korea and alerting the South Korean government in advance. Reform of the spy agency is necessary, but it's premature and wrong to argue that the meat of the reform should involve getting rid of the part of the agency that handles anti-communist intelligence. The spy agency's anti-communist intelligence wing also handles domestic affairs as NIS agents are authorized to collect and compile domestic public security information on suspected communists and attempts to overthrow the government. The current law also authorizes NIS agents to investigate crimes of insurrection or rebellion. Critics have argued that the agency's investigative authority in this ram is prone to abuse and easily manipulated for political surveillance. The main opposition Democratic Party wants to reduce the agency's authority over domestic affairs, saying that doing so would keep it away from local politics and allow it to focus on North Korea. The Chang Song Tech case has demonstrated that the spy agency really can play an important role for the nation if it does not waste its energy interfering in local politics and posting political comments online. The public hearings will continue through Tuesday after which lawmakers will start deliberating on how the National Intelligence Service law and a law on public officials should be revised to carry out the necessary reforms. Kim hyun Arirang News. Turning now to the railway strike that looks set to go the long haul, rather. Striking rail workers say they will hold a massive protest rally in Seoul this week unless the government backs out on its plans to set up a new rail operator that they claim is the first step towards privatization. The government and the police say they will follow the letter of the law in dealing with what they say is an illegal strike. Kim Hyun bin reports. Growing increasingly impatient with the rail strike, police plan to issue an arrest warrant for 10 union leaders on Monday after they failed to appear for questioning by officers. Once the warrants are issued, the 10 leaders will be taken into custody. In a separate incident, an 84-year-old woman was killed in southern Seoul on Sunday evening after her leg got stuck between the train doors while the subway was in operation. The person in charge of the subway doors at the time was a college student, just one of hundreds of substitutes that are filling in for well-trained regular workers as the railway union strike extends into its eighth day. The incident is bound to stir up the already heated public reaction to the strike. The labor union of the railway operator says that, unless the government responds to its demands by Tuesday, thousands of people will hold a mass nationwide protest rally on Thursday. If there's no response to our request by the 17th, we will conduct a legitimate nationwide protest starting on the 19th. The strike is starting to impact other parts of the nation's rail system. Subway operations in Seoul will be cut by roughly 8 percent from Monday. Daily KTX services, which had been running normally last week, will be reduced by 12 percent starting from Tuesday. Freight trains are operating at just 30 percent of normal levels, and concerns are growing that supply shortages could become a reality for small and mid-sized companies in the near future. Nearly 8,000 workers are currently on strike, and despite Corel's threats to remove them from their positions, only 600 previously striking workers have returned to work. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. More Koreans are late in paying their taxes, with many citing business closure and bankruptcy. The Ministry of Public Administration and Security said on Monday that 14,500 people or corporations owe the government more than 28,000 U.S. dollars and have not paid for more than two years. The number of delinquent taxpayers rose 26% from a year earlier, 
with unpaid tax totaling more than $2 billion. Included on the list are uh, Zhou Dongman, a former vice chair of Hansol, one of Korea's family control conglomerates, who owes the government more than $8 million, and former President John Tu Hwan. For your fill of Korean and international news, join Che Yu Sun and Mark Broom every weekday at lunchtime. Newsline at noon. Plenary session this Wednesday and vote on the government restructuring bills. Nelson Mandela has been buried in his hometown of Kunu following a state funeral service at which he was praised for teaching the world the lessons of forgiveness and reconciliation. Our Kim Minji reports. Family, friends and world leaders bid farewell to Nelson Mandela at a state funeral Sunday in his ancestral hometown of Kunu. The service took place in a huge tent at the family compound, where Mandela's portrait looked over his coffin draped in the South African flag and surrounded by 95 candles, each representing a year of his life. Guests sighing and prayed as the service began. For Tatu Nelson Mandela, for his faithfulness to your call, his example of justice, peace and reconciliation, and his courage to endure suffering, rejection, and persecution for the sake of others. Uh, we are deeply grateful to Madiba. We are deeply grateful that today we live in a lively democracy. We are deeply grateful that dignity has been restored to all South Africans. During the service, a 21-gun salute was heard in the distance. Around 4,000 guests attended the ceremony, including leaders of African nations, Prince Charles, and American talk show host Oprah Winfrey. As the service came to a close, military pallbearers carried the coffin to the burial site for a private ceremony where about 450 guests paid their last tributes. Military jets and helicopters displayed South African flags as Mandela's casket was lowered into the ground. The burial concludes a 10-day period of commemorations following Mandela's death on December 5th. Mandela spent 27 years in prison, locked up for his fight for freedom against the apartheid system. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. Turning to the tussle between European Union and Ukraine, the EU has suspended work on a planned trade and cooperation deal with Kiev, essentially because it doesn't trust the President Viktor Yanukovych to stick to his word. The EU Commissioner for Enlargement Stefan Fehler said on Twitter that he had told Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister that further discussion on the trade agreement was conditional on a clear commitment by Kiev to sign it. However, Feeler said he had not heard back from the Ukraine government, and as a result, work on the agreement was on hold. Tens of thousands of people again gathered in Kiev's Independence Square on Sunday, protesting the president's last-minute refusal to sign the EU agreement, favoring stronger ties with Russia. China's robot rover named Jade Rabbit and its lander have sent photos of the moon after safely landing on the lunar surface. Twelve days after blasting off from the country's south, the robotic vehicle and its landing module touched down on the moon at just past 9 p.m. Saturday, Beijing time. It marks the third unmanned rover mission to the moon since that of the U.S. and the former Soviet Union, and the first in more than 40 years. The six-wheeled jade rabbit, weighing 120 kilograms, can climb slopes of up to 30 degrees and can travel 200 meters per hour. The rover's three-month-long and the lander's year-long mission is part two of China's three-step space program to eventually bring samples of the moon's soil back to Earth by 2017. Now, they're calling it a kind of real-life Iron Man because NASA has revealed a kind of superhero robot which could possibly go into space. Meet Valkyrie, a robot in human form with two legs and two arms which can even walk on uneven terrain like a human. This robot was built in nine months by a group of NASA scientists for this year's DARPA Robotics Challenge. 
Valkyrie is 1.9 metres tall and weighs 125 kilograms. NASA hopes to use the robot to explore and research Mars, as it can also pick up objects and manoeuvre them with its hands. However, it is powered by a battery pack and the robot's activity is currently limited to one hour. Korea's top automaker says its market share in the BRIC nations of Brazil, Russia, India and China is at a record high. Hyundai Motor and its affiliate Kia Motors said Monday that the company's combined sales in the BRIC nations reached 2.34 million units in the January to November period, a sales record and a stark contrast from the company's sluggish sales in the U.S. The figure also represents the automaker's highest market share in the BRIC nations at 10.9% and the automaker says it expects that to increase two more than 11% depending on December sales. A spokesperson from the auto group attributed the sales growth to the release of models tailored especially to foreign consumers. Korean researchers have been closely studying how drinking alcohol affects activity in the brain and also the consequences it may have on your mental health. A newly released study shows that even consuming alcohol in small amounts can dramatically impact how your brain controls the way you think and feel. Pauli reports. Drinking responsibly with friends and colleagues can be an enjoyable experience. Unfortunately, having one too many drinks can lead to actions or words you may soon regret. The loss in control is already a well-known reaction anecdotally. However, scientists are still searching for the exact neurological reason as to why alcohol affects us in this way. A research team here in Korea sought to answer this question by monitoring the brain waves of two subject groups, those who drank orange juice and those who drank juice containing alcohol. Measurements were recorded using an electroencephalogram to analyze brain activity. A side-by-side -side comparison shows that those who consumed alcohol had reduced activity in their cerebral cortex, which is made up of neural tissue that connects the right and left sides of the brain. The study's lead author, Dr. E.J. Won from Gangnam Uji Hospital, says that this disconnect in brain function shows a possible link to decreased rational decision-making. If you drink alcohol, there is decreased communication between regions in the brain. I use the EEG method to determine the degree of communication between brain regions. This technology allows us to measure brain activity differently than other conventional methods. The study was published last month in the scientific journal Alcoholism Clinical and Experimental Research. The results show promise in establishing a new diagnostic tool in identifying various addictions and mental disorders. Paul Yi, Arirang News. Well, it looks as though those horses are having fun in the very cold weather. Maybe not an uh, actual human being so much. But let's get a check on the weather by going over to our Ijian at the Weather Center. Hello there, Jian. Well, good Monday afternoon to you. Well, it looks like we'll finally get a break from the cold snap this afternoon as the daily high should be 3 to 4 degrees warmer than yesterday under partly to mostly cloudy skies throughout the day. Uh, but there still could be some icy patches on the road, so please be on the lookout for that. Now, tomorrow we will wake up to another cold morning, but the afternoon high should be similar or a tad warmer to today's under mostly to partly sunny skies. Well, we should see a warm-up in our daily highs every day, but still staying below the seasonal averages throughout the week. And as we head into the end of the week, the temperatures should dip down to freezing side again, so please keep that in mind. And here are the readings for today. Now, the morning low in Seoul started out at minus 6, but the afternoon high in Seoul, Daegu and Gwangju will peak at 3, 5 and 6 respectively, 
while Busan should get up to nine with some patches of sunshine. Now let's see how other regions are looking. It looks like Jeju will stay below 10 with a high of nine this afternoon. Daejeon and Dokdo will get up to three and five, and there is a freezing day in store for Mount Kumgang at minus four. Now that's all for Korea, and here's the global forecast for viewers around the world. That's all for me today. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and back to Mark and Yusan in the studio. Thank you, Gian. And that's it for this Monday edition of Newsline at Noon. Join us again tomorrow for headlines making news here in Korea and around the world. And stay with us. We'll have more news coming your way in the afternoon.